And then the second point is arose in bodhicitta. So the number two, number two, the slogan, consider all phenomena as dreams. That is the slogan. This is bodhicitta. This is saying that uh, outer perceived objects, uh, the external world and uh, all sentient beings, everything, all phenomena are like uh, dreams. Consider all phenomena as dreams. Means everything. All phenomena means like, in Tibetan word, shifshi chu tamchit means like all phenomena, everything, external, internal, all sentient, everything, all the phenomena are like uh, dreams. Which means they don't exist outside of us. They just appear to our internal mind. Dreams sometimes appear to be totally realistic because when dreaming, everything seems to have physical reality and to be fully capable of causing benefit or suffering, right? However, all that we feel and see in a dream is just illusory and doesn't have any true existence. In the same way, when we feel strong emotions arise, they're like a dream. In the truth, there is nothing whatsoever that exists. And uh, we are convinced everything has true, inherent, independent self-existence because our mind is obscured by ignorance. Ignorance, mind obscured by ignorance. So desire, greed, hatred, pride, and all other these afflictions of the mind arise from this mistaken view, ignorance, mistaken view. Even though the images that appear in a dream seem to be very real because we don't realize. We don't realize we are dreaming. We think this is true. But they are actually illusions of our mind. Likewise, when we are awake, we are con convinced that things are real. Right? This is solid. This is real. Because we don't realize we are Misinterpret, what do you call it? Misinterpreting, misinterpreting what we perceive, right? It just is a dream, it just is a dream or function of our sleep. Daytime things are function of our lack of understanding because of the ignorance. So viewing each phenomena as existent by itself completely independent of its surroundings, causes and conditions, and our mental leveling of it, is same as regarded dream as real. So that's why Buddha said that everything is emptiness. But what is the reason for that? Most people don't really understand that everything depends on other things and nothing exists completely independent. Therefore, Buddha taught emptiness so we could understand this. If something appears, it must be dependent upon something else. You cannot find anything in this world that doesn't exist completely independent of everything else. So we could also say that 
it uh, it lacks inherent existence or cannot exist independently. So this is what we mean by emptiness. It is empty of inherent existence. Yet it is only possible to have uh, appearance because they are empty. They're not contradict, they are empty. Things can exist only because they are depend on other things. For example, we have a, we have a, this body, right? And we usually think of it, it's, it's, it's a, a single whole. But when we analyze it, investigate it, we find that this body is made of many things, many things. So this body doesn't exist by itself. If we investigate the body continually, uh, and we will find emptiness there. The realization, you know, emptiness, the liberation, everything is there. So the, all this appearance and uh, emptiness are inseparable in their nature. And uh, to understand and depend arising can help us to understand the essence of appearance, which is emptiness. Because things exist in this way, they exist like dreams. There is nothing independent and solid, but instead everything is fluid and has this dream-like quality. Then, if you understand this, then you might wonder how we could possibly generate compassion or what is the point of even having compassion at all? Everything like this, like emptiness. If everything is like a dream and unreal, then why have compassion? Why? This is mind training, right? Mind training, practice, compassion, bodhicitta. However, great compassion can never be diminished by the reality of emptiness. In fact, they maintain that it's only when we have a recognition of emptiness that we can be truly compassionate. Compassion only makes sense where there is a connection. And great compassion only makes sense when one can recognize the true nature of emptiness. Why? For example, the Buddha had great compassion because the understood from his experience that ordinary people hadn't recognized the ultimate truth, this emptiness. So they were suffering from ignorance. That's why the great compassion only makes sense when you can recognize the true nature of emptiness. Because we don't recognize, therefore we are suffering from ignorance. What really prevents us from generating love and compassion is isolation. So our attachment towards oneself and our aversion towards others, you know, prevents us from uh, uh, connecting and develop compassion. So the essence of this slogan tell us how to meditate on external things. And when you meditate in this way, all external things are something like dreams, something like dreams. You know, for example, the, 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 the great uh, the Dzogchen master, Dzogchen practitioners can go through walls, you know. For them, everything is totally open. There's nothing there for them, right? From that kind of magic point of view, all this phenomena must come from the mind. Mind. They are really nothing other than the mind. The wall is mind. The table is mind. Everything is mind. 
you can see it because when you investigate the all the external things you can't find but what you find is the, the uh, emptiness emptiness so that means everything right everything must come from the mind now the second question is what about the mind itself this is easy to understand everything is emptiness when you investigate the things you, it's very easy to understand Everything has come from mind. Okay, it's, everything's mind. But what about mind itself? In order to recognize the nature of mind itself, you need an instruction called the pointing out instructions, in which the teacher directly introduces the student to the nature of his or her mind. That's the only way you will understand what is mind itself. So now, we're going to talk about uh, the mind itself. So all the phenomena, everything, sentient beings, all, everything is like a dream, right? It's like a dream. Because everything is come, must, must come from the mind.